Ubuntu 20.04, I decided I'll give it a quick test run. And so I've been using it for about a week or so. And so this video is going to be basically my first impressions and opinions about the system so far. And keep in mind before I start talking about that, I'm using the Lenovo IdeaPad uh, 320 as the laptop here and the Wi-Fi worked out of the box. Um, the sound works just fine as well as the uh, keyboard and everything and the um, suspend works. So basically all in all the installation was smooth and uh, the performance as well. Um, and the second thing is if you're new to the channel I am a big KDE Plasma user so this is going to be an opinion from someone coming from KDE as I haven't used GNOME in over a year now. So um, the first thing that I can say is that there's definitely been a lot of improvements and I'm quite satisfied with my experience. Um, so where do I begin? Well, let's go to the settings really quick. So when it comes to the settings, the very first thing that I noticed uh, and that I've been anticipating in the new version is this Windows Colors option here. Uh, and it basically lets you change the standard application style here uh, from basically light mode to the standard to dark mode, uh, which is very nice. Um, I prefer the light mode, but um, one thing that I really appreciate about this is I didn't have the uh, need to install GNOME tweaks this time as I usually do in order to um, you know, uh, enhance my system experience. and. Uh, it's really nice that you have these default options here. Another thing that I did was um, the dock right here. By default, it was about 48 or 44, I believe, which, as you can see, it, um, it it's a bit too big, especially on something with a small resolution like mine. My screen only has 1366 by 768. Uh, so I figured uh, the panel just seemed a bit too big, even if I auto-hide it. Uh, it is nice, but um, I do think I, I personally prefer having it open. So I do prefer also having it smaller so I can fit more icons without having to scroll through them. And speaking of scrolling, that's another thing that uh, I went into and uh, changed. Uh, and it's funny because uh, it, the, the natural scrolling is uh, on by default. And what is considered natural scrolling seems unnatural to me because... Uh, I'm just used to when I scroll up, like when I move my fingers up, the list goes up. And when I move my fingers down, the list goes down. Um, although it does explain here what it's for. Um, it, it's just I, I've never I've never found that natural to me. So um, these were the two things that I um, changed up uh, initially. And I also um, adjusted the... Um, night color options. Uh, but apart from that, uh, everything's been very smooth. Like I said, the installation was smooth. Uh, and when it comes to the software now, I've pulled up Sublime Text here. Uh, when it comes to the um, uh, the software manager or software store, I always use this as an example. Um, but as you can see, it's got an option here on the top uh, for the channel. You can choose which one you want to use. Uh, and I really appreciate this. And if I were to have to compare this to Discover, I much prefer this software center. Uh, it looks a lot more polished and simple. Um, but as you can see, it's from the Snap Store, which to me, it's personally not that big of a deal. But um, I do prefer not to use Snap packages because they tend to be slow. So... Like if you personally don't like snaps, then there's going to be a lot of that um, in Ubuntu, which you can, of course, avoid. Uh, you can even remove uh, snap support. Um, I personally do like the fact that it's offered, but um, again, it's just uh, another thing is that I'd rather just go to the uh, website itself, which... Um, my internet's kind of slow right now, but um, I'd rather just go to the official website and install it from there as opposed to Snap Crafters, which I don't know who this might be. I think just about anybody can uh, go ahead and upload something on the Snap Store and uh, maintain it. Uh, 
which again, this isn't really any different from, for example, adding a PPA, for example, to your system and trusting the um, developer. But uh, again, um, I'd rather just get it from the official website. But again, that's the beauty of it is that you do have the option. You don't have to use it. But one thing that I don't appreciate is let's hope if it loads up with a slow internet is um, Chromium, for example. I really like the Chromium browser. And that also, but this is verified, which is nice. Um, that also comes from the Snap Store. I tried it out. Um, it works fine. It's just, it, it takes a bit longer to than usual in comparison to my other applications to start up. Um, so for that, I've been wondering if I should try out maybe um, ungoogled Chromium, which provides a debt package, but I didn't see any support for the latest release yet. Uh, so that's about that. Um, so I, I have been using Firefox, which I don't really use on KDE because uh, on my system, I have the global menu enabled. And when you have the global menu enabled, this is a bug, which I really want to be fixed. I don't really like it. But if you have the global menu enabled, you don't have the title bars. They don't appear if you've uh, disabled the um, given title bar, which this isn't disabled by default. Um, but it, it's definitely one of the first things I decided to do. Um, but I do really like the way Firefox looks and behaves on um, on uh, Ubuntu because it is a GDK application. It looks very nice. And even though KDE did improve uh, the look and feel of uh, GDK applications uh, on their desktop, I just um, I think it looks really good um, just on GNOME. So when it comes to the file manager, for example, um, I don't like it as much as Dolphin because I'm just used to having more features. Um, but it is this is still one of my uh, favorite file managers. Um, and in fact, I've, I've had to use Nautilus um, a couple of times because one thing that I much prefer over uh, this over, um, for example, Dolphin from KDE is you could just do sudo Nautilus and then you can um, access it with uh, root permissions. So you can change up uh, specific files from uh, folders that you otherwise can't uh, edit. Um, but one thing that I don't like is, and this is a trend that I've seen on the GNOME desktop. Again, I, I really like it. It looks very polished. Uh, this is a, a very nice system here. Um, but it's just one thing is I feel like when it comes to, um, let's see, how do you edit this? Oh, there we go. When it comes to making use of space, I just think that, for example, here with the options, these are the default options when it comes to resizing stuff. So these smaller ones make sense, but once you reach over a hundred percent, it just, they, they get a bit too oversized. And I, I feel like the percentages here for zooming in, uh, of the folders just kind of doesn't make sense. And maybe if there was more options or, or like a slider, uh, that would be better. Um, but I do think that uh, sometimes there's just a lot of space um, that otherwise could be more compact. For example, like the right menu here, uh, considering uh, how much white space there is here when I highlight something, as you can see, there's there's a lot of white space that just, it's just there. Um, and I think that uh, when, when it comes to the, what, what was it called? Um, the shell, I believe, like this, for example, it looks good, but I just think it's a bit oversized. Um, and an, another thing that never made sense is I really like the calendar here. It looks very good, but I don't understand why the notifications are combined with it. Another thing is if you try to... Uh, change anything up here in the system tray. If you want to access only one of the icons, it shows you all of them. Um, it would be nice if, if you were to try to, let's say, just adjust the sound, have only the sound um, settings up here. Um, but apart from that, I, I do really like uh, GNOME and how it's evolved. Uh, I really like the uh, system settings here. They're very simple, and I really like that. I, I like how easy it is to navigate everything and um, it definitely looks a lot better than the 
KDE system settings, for example. And also, don't get me started on changing backgrounds and stuff like that. Because when it comes to KDE, sure, you just right click on the desktop, you change the uh, wallpaper. But if you want to change the lock screen and whatnot, um, well, that's that's when things get a bit confusing. And um, I just think that if you want to change the lock screen or you want to change the um, uh, the logout screen or the default wallpaper, they should make it a bit easier to, to be able to change both, in my opinion. Um, so that's where I feel like GNOME uh, excels in a sense that, it, you know, even though it might have uh, a bit less features, it does... Um, it is a lot uh, simpler and more intuitive. Another thing uh, that's it's really minor, um, but it didn't really make sense is the terminal by default had uh, the theme variant on dark. I noticed that when I changed the light sy um, system settings, uh, this remained dark. I don't know why it's not by default. By default, <laughs> um, it would just make more sense. But whatever, that that's very minor. Um, one thing that's really interesting is there's this uh, to-do app uh, application here, and it's very simple and easy to use. And you have your um, settings and options here. Um, and I really like it. Uh, if only there was something similar, like a KD application that was uh, similar. I mean, they do have a widget or whatever. Uh, but you could very easily just add tasks and just complete them and you could edit them here take notes whatever you know have due dates and whatnot and you can have priorities which a different color shows up for each priority and you could easily delete it um, i recently saw a video by the linux experiment showing um, an application called planner and sure it has a lot more features um, I personally prefer this once I just saw it because um, it, it's, you know, it has less features, but it is more simple and whatnot. Uh, the calendar application is also something that I really appreciate. I wish KDE had um, something more simple here um, that you could just add events and not have to worry about it. Um, I just think that their uh, application for the calendar and the mail and everything, it, it's just a bit too complex. Too many settings, again. Um, it can be a good thing and a bad thing. So uh, when, when it comes to the default applications and everything, um, I really like the default applications it ships with. Um, and so, yeah, like I said, I, I mean, for the most part, I've been having... Uh, very smooth experience as you can see the the um, animations are very snappy um, they've really improved the like the smoothness of the animations like switching here from uh, snapping the window another thing I really like is uh, the image viewer is very nice because on KDE you have to hold control and then and then scroll in order to um, zoom in and out but uh, whatever this application is I don't know what it's called image viewer I guess um, you could just zoom in and out by uh, scrolling back and forth and again like I just really like the simplicity of it um, but there's just one thing that I feel like needs to be improved and that is sure I'm using OBS right now and I'm recording but using 2.5 2.6 gigabytes of RAM <laughs> and as you can see the CPU and everything I think this is a bit too much because um, I was just using my uh, KD Neon system a couple of days ago I had uh, two browsers open with multiple tabs I had a um, music player in the background I had sublime text running ocular uh, the pdf viewer in case you don't know um i had multiple applications open and just then it was using two gigabytes um of ram and and sure sure i mean it's it's not something uh, that may be as intensive as obs but i mean i think google chrome with uh 
with multiple tabs, like having multiple, uh, two browsers, multiple tabs in, on each browser, you know, two gigabytes, I think that's very good. Whereas this, this is just two, two and a half gigabytes, which exceeds that with only OBS. Um, so I think when it comes to memory usage, I mean, they have to, they have to do something about it, you know? Uh, I mean, my, my fans have been spinning a lot. Uh, I must admit the um, system is a lot quieter when I'm using KDE Plasma as my desktop. It's not to say I don't like GNOME. I really do. And I would be more inclined to use it um, if two things were changed about it. Um, one, if they make it a bit more, um, what's it called, lightweight. So if it uses uh, less resources. And two, if they add blur, um, in case you don't know, I really like blur and I feature it a lot on my channel, like in my themes and whatnot. And as you can see, uh, with the file manager in the background, um, when I have it behind the panel, as you can see, the panel is transparent and it just doesn't look as appealing. Um, and it looks kind of distracting as, uh, compared to if, if there was blur enabled, um, so I'm not sure if there's any plans for that in the future, but, uh, hopefully there are, but that's basically it. Um, just a quick, you know, uh, opinion on things, uh, just my thoughts using the distribution and the desktop environment. Um, and yeah, if this video was helpful or anything like that, let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you liked it, make sure to like, and subscribe. And that was basically it. Thanks for watching.